In our last episode, we met Duchess, the proprietor of the Wayward Bar, who's being harassed by a bunch of free radical raiders. They're trying to find some guy named Crane, whom they think has a secret to unlock a treasure in Appalachia. Duchess asked us to solve the situation, and so we need to head to the West Virginia Lumber Mill to confront them. Before we do, we can make two pit stops to get information that will help us in our confrontation. The first is to visit nearby Anchor Farm and to question a family living there concerning the Free Radical Raiders. Anchor Farm is just northwest of Vault 76. It's one of the first locations we stumble upon after taking the road north from the vault. Anchor Farm is named after the giant anchor, inexplicably standing just outside the farm. In the backyard of the house, we find a ruined airplane, a number of workbenches, and a settler. Thought Appalachia was going to be better than back east. We've been through enough trying to get here, all right? Just leave us in peace. Moving onto the porch, we find a small child. You... you should go. He'll get me in trouble. These settlers don't seem too thrilled to see us. Heading inside the house, we can take a staircase to the top floor, where we find a man named Daniel drinking coffee by a window. Plenty of unclaimed space up the road. Maybe you should give it a visit. Are you guys new to the area? Just like everyone else. Except we like our privacy. Are you trying to get rid of me? Trying to let you know you're trespassing. Free to leave whenever you like. Are you all here for the treasure? Treasure? Nothing but trouble. We hope to start new lives here. Private ones. So much for that. Heard you might have had some dealings with the gang up at West Virginia Lumber. West Virginia Lum- No. Don't know anything about them. Now I'd like you to leave. You sure you don't know anything? I'm sure what I know is none of your business. Now, how about you take a hike? We find a number of options here. We can pass a charisma check of three to say, We're all friends here. Just tell me what you know, and I'll get out of your hair. You'll go. Fine. We worked out a deal. Supplies for protection. What do you need to know to leave? Or we can pass a perception check of three to say, You sure? Because you started sweating when I mentioned them. I know you know something. Uh, all right. We worked out a deal. Supplies for protection. What do you want to know about it? Tell me about this deal you worked out. Once a month. Food, ammo, scrap. Murray and me take it up to the mill ourselves. Gave us a password to get in. Blue Danube. Any idea how many people are in this gang? Plenty. A dozen, minimum. They don't let us in the main building, so I can't say how many were camped out in there. Any idea where these guys came from? Bunch of cons from back east. They're not crazy, though. Not like the Blood Eagles or the Scorch, say. You can reason with them. They don't know how to farm or hunt. We do. So we worked out a deal. You have something you can offer them? You probably can, too. I'm going to kill these guys. You can start giving those supplies to me instead. You... you do that. Maybe I can see having a little something set aside for you. One time, though. No other questions right now. Then by all means, beat it. Blue Danube is the passkey. Perhaps this will come in handy. We find a lot of scrap exploring the house, and then if we head back down to the first floor and look behind the stairs, we find an unlocked floor safe. Inside is a holotape, Agreement with Radicals. Maggie, we all benefit here. We provide you with protection, and you help feed the many, many mouths I have at my camp. You mean you get to take whatever you want and leave us all to starve? It won't come to that. I'll see to it personally. Now, do we have a deal? You can take your deal and shove it. We're not your slaves. If you want our food, you can... (gasps) 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 (gasps)
sorry, Maggie. The rest of us are in agreement. We'll bring you shipments once a season. Once a month. Once a month. I'll deliver it personally. Good. Password to get inside is Blue Danube. Pleasure doing business with you. Daniel killed one of his own, Maggie, so as not to upset Roper, leader of the Free Radicals. Heading upstairs, we can try to confront Daniel. We're not hiring, so you can go. Now I understand why you want me gone. You're murderers. What are you? Hmm. You found the tape. Fine, I did it. And I'd do it again, because Maggie was going to get us all killed. She wanted us to stand up to those thugs, to take them on all by ourselves. There are four of us. You know how many times we're outnumbered by that gang? Three to one, four to one. I have a daughter and she's alive now because we all were willing to make a deal. Maggie was going to throw that away because she didn't like being pushed around. Was bound to happen sooner or later. And that's it. We can't say anything else to him. And since he's a story-related NPC, he is invincible. We can't kill him. I spent some time running around, trying to find the body of this Maggie, but I couldn't find a grave or any sign of her body. Though we do find evidence that the settlers here are constantly fighting off enemies. We find a pile of carcasses in the corner. They don't mind if we help ourselves, and as a farm, it's a great place to hit for vegetation. Lots of vegetables, even some purified water, and plenty of workbenches. Look, I'm not supposed to be talking to you, but nearest Tonga Ocean is 300 miles from here. Someone really dragged that anchor all this way? That's a good question. How did a ship's anchor get all the way to Anchor Farm in West Virginia? I guess we'll never know. So we've got a password that allows us access to the lumber mill. But what could the scrapper at Tyler County Fairgrounds give us? We find the fairgrounds by following the road north from Anchor Farm. It's right between Anchor Farm and the West Virginia lumber mill. When we arrive, we might start a miscellaneous quest to collect a missing Jangles the Moon Monkey. This one is easy. We find him on the ground behind one of the stalls in the middle of the fairground. We find the Scrapper on the roof of one of these little huts, hiding from the Scorched. We can get up here with a jetpack, or if we don't have one, we find a rubble ramp leading on top of a nearby tent, and from here, we can jump on top. The Scrapper's name is Leibowitz. Hey, get the hell out of here! Oh, you're not one of those creeps. Well, you here to rob me? Well, joke's on you, don't got nothing. We could pass a strength check of four to rob this guy, or we can say, so what's your story? Me? Come here. I'm a science experiment. Broke out of a government lab, trying to decide whether to use my powers for good or evil. Figured I'd have a drink while I thought. Okay, anything you can tell me about the area? Folks have been doing some building at that track across the way. You could try your hand at it. Oh, I'd steer clear of the West Virginia lumber up the road. There were a bunch of ogres or whatever up there, but it sounds like someone might have given them the boot. Not sure it's an improvement. At least you could smell the ogres coming. Why are you hiding out in a place like this? Looking for peace and quiet? Presume those creeps down there would keep everyone else away. <laughs> Guess I was wrong. I heard you were bragging about being able to run everyone out of West Virginia lumber. How? Ah, uh, you talked to the well-done guy, huh? Well, yeah, uh, I got a little trick up my sleeve. Could kill them all, if I wanted. But I'm not giving it away for free. You gotta get me something. What is it you're gonna give me? Government-issued astral transporter. Snagged it on my way out of the lab. Takes your physical form and drops it right into the astral plane. Makes you nearly invisible! Makes it a whole lot easier to take folks out of this world at the same time. If you've got something that'll make you invisible, why don't you grab this thing yourself? Makes you invisible, not agile. I can't run so good since I escaped from the government. But I bet you can. And what is it you want? Island nearby's got a big nest in it. 
Bring me an egg? I'll give you what I got. What am I stealing this egg from? Something nasty enough that I don't want to do it? Up to you, though. We can pass an intelligence check of four to say, You know, it'd be a whole lot easier to steal this thing for you if I've got one of those transporters. Uh, I suppose there's some logic to that. Uh, Here you go. And with that, he hands us one stealth boy. Now, we could bully him by passing a strength check of eight, or we can say I should head out. Mind the locals out there. Okay, so what? This guy was kidnapped by the government and experimented upon? Uh, what? By the Enclave? Something has certainly made him paranoid. He wants us to retrieve an egg from nearby Deathclaw Island. Heading to the island, we pass by a picnic from a horror movie. Something mangled these guys. And we find a Deathclaw egg inside a suitcase by a Deathclaw nest. But, uh, no Deathclaw. Both of the times I tried this, there was no Deathclaw here. So I don't know if I just got lucky or the Deathclaw just failed to spawn. Either way, once we have the egg, we can go back to the Tyler County Fairgrounds and give the egg to Leibowitz. You find me my egg? You sent me to an island filled with Deathclaws. Now you understand why I didn't want to go. So you got me my egg or not? I got one. Here. Well, hello. That is a beauty. When you're hatched, you're going to call me Papa. Here, those are my end of the bargain. Make the most of them. And as a reward, he gives us three stealth boys. He doesn't give us one less if we passed the intelligence check. That got us one earlier, so we can walk away with four stealth boys by passing the check first. Well, the point of this encounter is clear. Instead of using the password, Blue Danube, to talk our way into the camp, we could use a stealth boy to sneak in and assassinate Roper, the leader of the Free Radicals. An assassination sure sounds fun, but for the sake of the story, we'll go ahead and use the password to see if we can learn more about these Free Radicals. We don't know much about the pre-war history of the West Virginia Lumberyard, There's not a lot of lore there, but what we do know comes from the Gilman Lumber Mill, which is really close to Vault 76, one of the first places we are likely to explore. We find a skeleton on a balcony at the very top of the ruin, sitting in a chair with a potted plant and a hatchet. On a crate next to him is a note, a job opportunity. Gary, you sick of cutting wood over there yet? I've been working over at West Virginia Lumber Yard for a few weeks now, and it's a world of difference. Better pay, better hours, and best of all, no robots. I talked to the foreman here, and he's looking for a few more guys. You better grab the gang and head over here before someone else grabs your spot. Paul. Sounds like the Gilman Lumber Mill was automating, like much of Appalachia. But West Virginia Lumber, at least, still hired people and apparently treated them well. Heading to West Virginia Lumber, we see that it has changed a lot. We explored this place in a previous live stream, and as Leibowitz said, it was swarming with super mutants. But now, it's a walled-off raider city made from scrap shacks, floating pods, tents, and shipping containers. We find a pile of burning super mutant bodies just outside the front door. And to gain entrance, we can talk to the nearby speaker. What? I'd like to join your organization. Don't take in strays. Unless someone gave you the password, you can take a hike. Butternut squash. Oh, wait, you said password or safe word? (laughs) Nice try. Now, either give me the password or take a hike. Oh, well, I don't know the password. Then kindly piss off. Look, I'm here to talk to your boss. Oh, yeah? What's the password? If our luck is high enough, we can pass a luck check to say, uh, the password, which I definitely know is Blue Danube, or we could attack, or if we have the password, we can say Blue Danube. Go on through. And with that, we can walk around the lumber mill and explore it without the free radicals attacking. The lumber camp has changed a lot, but there's still a lot of wonderful scrap around here. We learn from Raider Flavor Dialogue that after killing the mutants, they dumped most of the bodies in the river. I'd avoid the river. 
Unless you like swimming in mutant guts. Though when I dove into the river, I couldn't find a single corpse. We do find few piles of super mutant bodies burning around the camp. We can walk away with a lot of scrap, a lot of ammunition, and a wide array of low-level weapons. We can even find a suit of raider power armor and a couple of fusion cores here. We also find a bit of an automobile workshop here. Looks like the Free Radical Raiders are trying to retrofit this pre-war nuclear-powered limousine. Perhaps they dragged this here from Hornwright. We see the mechanic milling about by a work table, and on the table, we find a holotape. Lugnut's vehicle modifications. So I uh, finally found a supercharger for Roper's limo. Sent Dog Breath and his crew over to Gorge Junkyard and they hit the jackpot. Uh, they even found uh, an engine hoist, some big block double dump heads and uh, pistons. The head gaskets are blown, but that shouldn't be a problem. I'll know more when I start ripping it apart. We're also going to take a shot at modifying the exhaust and the suspension. Big Rig is next on the list, though. I'm having spikes welded to the sides. That should too. save bullets from dealing with the ghouls. I just finished up mounting a harpoon gun on the hood. Can't wait to own some sevens with that thing. <laughs> the radical will rain hell on this earth once these vehicles hit the road. Wow! These free radicals were gonna go full on Mad Max here. And within the context of the Fallout universe, their plan isn't too far fetched. After all, a certain chosen one does pretty much the same thing to a highwayman in about 138 years. I wonder if we should put a stop to this. Another cool feature in the middle of the Free Radical camp is a Raider throne. At the top of the throne is a plunger, and if we push it, we turn on a bunch of flaming jets. Pretty rock and roll throne there. Roper, the leader of the Free Radicals, is inside a brand new interior cell that we find at the sawmill. This is the West Virginia Lumber Company office. Once inside, we immediately find a Porta Diner. We can try our luck. No dice. We arrive on a middle floor. If we head to the bar, we can find a short double barrel shotgun and a sickle, as well as a bunch of shotgun ammunition and a hatchet. We can take a staircase to the top level, which serves as the Free Radicals locker room. We can find some chems and ammunition in the lockers and a tinkerer's workbench. We also find a scattered laser rifle, a great find early on in the game, and a few beds, all of which we can use if we're sleepy. Missing something, Tin Man? If you're looking for Toto, check the river. Heading back down to the middle floor, we can move to the other staircase. Near to a chemistry station, we find a fire axe. And when ready, we can take the staircase down to the bottom floor. Here we find a blasted out terminal, a chainsaw, and a cap stash on a nearby table. Hey, Gen Pop, I smell? <laughs> Wash these clothes like three times. <clears throat> Still think they reek of mutant blood. When I streamed this live, I had no idea what Gen Pop meant. But the chat clued me in. They said it's short for general population. I guess the Free Radicals are using Gen Pop as a derogatory term for anyone who isn't them. There's a stim pack on a desk next to a skill level zero locked box safe with goodies inside. And when done looting this level, we find a staircase leading down to a root cellar. As we move forward, we overhear a conversation. No one's heard from Batter. Suspect he finally managed to get himself killed. <laughs> Batter was a long shot anyway. Always figured it'd take someone coloring with a full box of crayons to find us our prize. Roper, here we find the Raider boss. We arrive on a ledge overlooking a pit. Not much up here on this ledge, but scrap. Moving down to the lower level, we find a weapons workbench a shelf filled with cams, and a holotape. The wayward interrogation. Say it again so the mic can hear you. The name. Crane. And where is this Crane? I, I saw him. We were at this bar. The wayward, just north of Flatwoods. And what does he know? He said he was on the trail of this vault. The people kind or the richest kind? The kind that holds stuff. The kind that holds stuff. <laughs> I'll consider the topic clarified. You think it's the treasure? 
I, I don't know. He, he didn't say. Well, seems like that'd be worth finding out, wouldn't it? it yes. Are you afraid of me? Oh, God, yes. Don't be. We're not monsters here. We're pragmatists. You can get off the floor. Are you... You're not going to kill me? Not unless you give me a reason. Do you have a place to go? No, no. Do you want one? What would you need me to do? Go upstairs. Have a meal and a drink. Share what you know. Maybe it'll jog some memories. From there, we can talk. And if I wanted to leave? We're all free men and women here. A little family. We take care of our own. Rest of the world, be damned. Huh. He seems to have left that last line there open-ended. We are all free men and women, he says, giving us the impression she was free to go, and yet he says that the rest of the world, not part of his family, be damned. Do they really let those who choose to leave the free radicals go? When ready, we can talk with Roper. <sighs> you the one with the password? Presume someone gave it to you because they thought you could be useful. Name's Roper. Now, explain to me why the hell you're taking up my air. Who are you guys? Just a little band of friends, working together for the common good. Our common good. We call ourselves the Free Radicals, because that's what we are. Free. Now, you have any other time wasters you wanted to throw at me? I'm looking for the Overseer of Vault 76. Have you seen her? I hadn't realized I was looking so much like a milk carton. Unless you've got real business, I suggest you get the hell out of here. Now, we have two options. We can start by saying, I want you to leave the wayward alone. Is that so? And why exactly would I do that? We can make things easy for ourselves by passing a strength check of eight and saying, because if you don't, I will rip you all limb from limb. Don't know why you care so much, but <sighs> fine. We'll get Crane's treasure ourselves. Now get out of here before I change my mind. And that's it. Mission successful. We have intimidated the Free Radicals. <sighs> All this over a little damn bar? Don't know what she's offering you, but it better be a lot. Alternatively, instead of intimidating him, we can say, I want to join your crew. And I want a diamond-studded vertebrate. So I guess that means we're both left wanting something. Explain to me why you should get yours. Oh, never mind. Now I want a diamond-studded vertebrate. <laughs> well, you can get in line. Now, you gonna tell me why I should bring you on? Because otherwise you can go jump in the river. Because I can get you Crane's treasure. That's so. You bring me that treasure, then yeah, you have a place here. Well, what are you waiting for? Go find my pot of gold. With that choice, we have now promised the Free Radicals access to Crane's treasure, which we haven't found yet. Turning around, we find a note on Roper's desk. What's that smell? Note is for reminder. Either something died or someone was buried down here when they were digging this area out. Get Jackie to bring down a dog and sniff it out. Can't stand the stench too much longer. About to hurl. Yeah, the readers here often complain about the smell, but I turned this place upside down and I couldn't find a body, a skeleton, anything. Which is weird because typically these raiders like to hang out with dismembered skeletons. Like in every Fallout game, raiders are surrounded by decomposing bodies. But not the Free Radicals, unless you count the super mutants outside. All of that said, these raiders still kill and torture settlers. We find cages in their main camp with the bodies of settlers and traitors. People they likely tortured and killed for their wealth and secrets. No matter which option we choose, at this point we have to return to Duchess. You're back. You managed to get those punks out of our hair yet? If we convince them to leave the wayward alone, we find an option to say, Sure did. I told them if they didn't back off, there'd be consequences. And that worked? 
Well, remind me not to get on your bad side. Or if we tried to join their gang by promising them Crane's treasure, we'd find an option to say, I worked a deal out with them. We just have to tell them where the treasure is. Oh, is that all? <laughs> I guess I should have specified how I would have liked this to be resolved. I suppose it's on both our heads to find this treasure then. Either way, she continues. But you did good. Shows maybe you could be trusted. Maybe. But there's still the issue of my missing muscle. They went out chasing some unsavory characters. Never came back. They're two of the tougher cookies I've met in my day. So them being gone this long means something happened. You track them down? Maybe I remember a thing or two about this Crane fella. So you do know where Crane is? Maybe. My age, memories get unreliable. But I bet you finding my people would help refresh it. What are you paying? Hundred caps with your name on them, sound about right. What can you tell me about the folks that have gone missing? Well, missing person number one's named Polly. Got a transmitter in her. You could track her with your little radio there. Missing person number two goes by Saul. Those two are closer than toes and bad stilettos. So if you find one, the other's likely close by. Find them for me, and I'll pay you for the privilege of getting to yell at them in person. Any idea where they went? Not the foggiest, but that's where the transmitter comes in. Tune to her station and it should get you going in the right direction. Wait, Polly's got a transmitter in her? Yeah, a little something I slipped under her exterior plate in case she got carried off. I did mention she's a combat bot, right? A, a friendly one. I got her reprogrammed when I bought her, so she's not gonna hurt you. Unless they bashed up her combat inhibitor. Well, then, all bets are off. I made the same offer to Saul regarding the tracker under his exterior, but he declined. <laughs> Go figure. What can you tell me about these things your people were after? They're called the Scorched. They're an unpleasant bunch, in character and appearance. They've got raw skin with crystals sticking out of them. And they're still real handy when it comes to firearms and bludgeons, so you'll want to be careful around them. That's for damn sure. Wait, they went after the Scorched? Why? We can pass a charisma check of three to say, sounds like you like these people. Do you 150 caps like them? Huh, you're not wrong. Okay, it's a deal. So you'll find them for me? All right, I'll find out what happened to your people. Appreciate it. Polly's tracking frequency is 99.7. The once proud home of Appalachia's smooth jazz. I figured someone should get some use out of it. Find out what happened to him. If I need to find new people, I'd like to at least ensure I tried to do right by the old ones. With that, we complete the quest, Hunter for Hire, and begin the quest, Strength in Numbers. Track down Duchess's missing people. If we again talk with Mort, and if we promise the raider's treasure, Mort expresses his concern. Hope this deal of yours doesn't come back to bite us. Now, what do you need? However, if we didn't, he practices his narration. Hello, this is Headmaster Moore. Is that any better? Look, I think I'm getting there. Thanks again for listening to those tapes. Now, what'd you want? Sadly, even though he promised us more holo tapes in the future, so we don't find any further options to get more out of him. Now, what was it Duchess said? Channel 99.7. Tuning to it in our Pip-Boy, we pick up a broadcast. And here the message repeats. Taking a look at our map, we find that the broadcast source is coming from somewhere to the northeast. But sadly, we're all out of time. We'll explore the source of this broadcast in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. 
If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.